Gentlemen, please welcome the founder and host of BuddyCast, Nick Sorensen. It's a wonderful evening. It's the day after Valentine's Day, and it's another great episode of everybody's favorite show, BuddyCast. I'm your host, Nick Sorensen. Joining me today is a very special buddy. We met through comedy. We've you know, seeing each other around town a lot. My buddy, Heather Hart. How are you doing today, Heather? I'm doing awesome. It was beautiful out today. And that song just put a smile on my face. That was fabulous. Yes, <laughs> love it. Love it. Everyone loves that theme song, don't they, honey? Yeah, it's very cheery. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, Heather, you're a massage therapist. You are you foster dogs. You love eerie comedy because that's how we met, you know? Yep. So tell us a bit, a bit about your love for eerie comedy, like how you got into that a little bit. So however many years ago, um, I, I mean, the comedy scene's really only been around for about four or five years, really here in Erie. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think they were doing shows at um, the Avalon. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about dabbling and maybe start trying to do some stand up comedy myself. So I started going to I don't know how I found those shows, but somehow I found that Anthony Morelli and and uh, everybody was doing those. So I started just going myself just to watch and to start to get to know you guys, you know, mm -hmm. um, somehow I wiggled my way in there. And um, but I, I found out that my stage fright was a little too much for me. So um, mm -hmm. which was fine because I still um, like being part of the scene. I still love supporting it. Um, and there's so many my hair is doing crazy stuff here. Yeah. There's so many other ways um, that, you know, that I can still support the comedy scene and help promote it um, and go out and watch the shows. And I talk about you guys all the time to all my friends um, and clients and stuff. So um, it's you guys, the comedy scene itself has really grown. So awesome. We love the support. I still need to get I'm in kind of like a comedy funk right now. So I need to get myself back out there. I need to get back on that stage soon. Are you so. going to do are you going to do the flagship comedy festival? I might. I'm talking to Anthony about it or I need to talk to Anthony about it, but I'm still working. Like I, ever since I know for a lot of people, it was reverse because a lot of people, the pandemic helped them because they finally had that moment to sit down and, you know, but I was working during the pandemic. So I was, you know, I didn't get that chance to sit down master the craft. So this is actually for the first time since 2019, yeah. I've, I've gotten my weekends back and my evenings back. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Time to refresh yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and you can still go to the festival and enjoy yourself. Exactly. Support my that, yeah, yeah. Hopefully maybe that'll help spark some, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, inspiration for you too, you know? Absolutely. So Heather, I got to ask, speaking of inspiration, what inspired you to go into massage therapy? 20 years ago, it wasn't, it wasn't anything very inspirational. It was I, I guess it was more, I was just at a point where I didn't know what to do with myself. Honestly, I had worked many office jobs um, and I'm very good at administrative type of work, organization, different things like that. But I knew it wasn't something that I wanted to do forever. Um, so I had had a few beers one night and I was actually selling life insurance through by Bankers Life and Casualty. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh, hell no, I am not doing that. Um, so I didn't go in and um, I started looking. I don't even know if we had online then 2003. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And found massage therapy school. And I was like, well, it can't it can't be any worse. So I always knew that I kind of wanted to do my own thing um, that was inspired by my father, who uh, was a tool and dive maker growing up. And he had a little shop right next to our house growing up. Um, so I always knew I kind of wanted to do my own thing, kind of follow a little bit in his steps. He inspired me in that way. Um, and I didn't understand the whole connection when I signed up to go to school, but went to school, 
um, got out. It was something that I could grow on my own. I mean, not for the first seven years. I still worked for other people for about seven years um, till I got the cojones to kind of go out on my own and, and kind of grow it from there. So nice. Nice. Yeah. When did you decide to finally go on your own and take care, you know, open your own business? Uh, 2010. I was working with a chiropractor. Um, awesome, awesome guy, Dr. Stephen Krause out on East Lake Road. Yep. Me and him both. He was growing his business as, as I was kind of with him. I was his right hand woman um, doing massage, running his front desk. Um, and one day I just kind of looked at him and I was like, you know, kind of thinking about going out on my own. If anybody's going to do it, I think I could do it. And he was like, you can. Um, and he was fully supportive of, supportive of me. And um, then I went out on my own. Awesome. Now what, for our buddies out there watching, what services could you offer them? Like what different type of massages or all the so, benefits? Yeah. So right now I've, I've uh, grown my business. I have a staff of six other therapists that work with me. Um, and we're really branching out to different niche uh, specialties. So right now I have two therapists who do a shiatsu. Um, we have bars installed in the ceiling. They actually hop up on the table with you and they use their feet to massage you. Ooh. Yeah, it's super cool. Really, really cool. You can get some really good deep pressure that way too. Um, we have Diana who's doing lymphatic drainage. And then she also just came back with a modality called liposage. Um, so it's a nice natural way to do some face lifting, also some contouring and toning um, of your body, the upper body, lower body, um, some of those areas as us ladies get a little bit older, might cringe at a little bit. So um, she's been doing that. Um, what else? We do deep tissue, very specific um, integrative type of massage where we can focus. You know, if you just want your feet worked on, we can do that. If you just need your low back worked on, we can do that. So we do very specific type of body work that we can do. And then, of course, just your classic relaxation, which we all need, right? Mm -hmm. You got that right. Yeah. Especially those of us that have the desk job, you know? Yes, yes, absolutely. And then in customer service and all that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I went from a salesman job to a desk job within this past month. So I know all about it from walking around all day, being on your feet all day to now sitting on a desk all day. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. So I hear you also offer canine massages. I do for myself. Yes. So um, I don't actually do the canine massage itself. But what I like to do is I like to get together with the owners um, and show them how they can work with their own dogs. Um, I think it's I think we forget sometimes we get caught up in our lives and, you know, our dogs are right next to us. But I think we forget sometimes to take that moment to connect with them physically. Um, and that's how they communicate. That's how you know, more so than anything, they ob obviously verbally, we can't communicate with canines. Um, so I really like to help people feel a little bit more confident working um, and massaging their dogs themselves. Hey, Nugget, you want a massage? <laughs> <laughs> ruff, ruff. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what are some of the health benefits that come with getting a massage, in your opinion? Oh, well, it releases all those good chemicals in our brain, those natural drugs that we already have, um, the dopamine, um, all those good feel good chemicals. Um, it also helps lower the stress chemicals in your body, cortisol um, that we build up every day. The majority of the time we're all in fight or flight syndrome ready. Um, so massage really helps take you out of that, helps you physically get out of that. And then some of the new services that we're doing in our expansion are going to be part of that as well. So, um, and plus it's just a nice way to connect, right? Mm -hmm. Mind, body, and soul all together. Wow. You mentioned an expansion. What What's going on with that? So I have acquired a thousand square feet right next to us. We are in the process of getting ready to blow that out. And we are putting in two sensory deprivation float rooms. Uh, mm -hmm. We're putting in a Himalayan salt cave. And then we're putting in another treatment room where we're going to do some cryotherapy. That's going to be a cross between targeted pain relief sessions, as well as going into that contouring and toning um, as well. And then we want to do some infrared sauna red light therapy for people too. That sounds awesome. 
the float rooms are going to be amazing. I am super, super excited to be able to bring these to Erie. And I've got some really, really nice ones lined up. They're not necessarily the float pods that everybody sees, although pods are kind of appropriate right now with everything going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they're, these are really, really nice float rooms. Um, there, we don't have anything that comes down and closes over top of you. You're actually going to walk into a room, lay down and float. It goes all the way up to the ceiling. So there's no feelings of claustrophobia for anybody. Um, and then within the room itself, while you're floating, you have full control of the lighting, the music, and then there'll be an intercom to the front desk too. So you're, if you have any issues, you can give us a call. If you want the light and the music on your first session, that's fine too. That's kind of what I did when I first started floating. Um, eventually, when I went to full sensory deprivation, I was like, oh, yeah, that's where it's at. So it might take a little bit to get there, but I'm super excited to bring this to Erie. I think it's going to be um, just what we need here in our community. Nice. So the blueprints have all been brought out. Everything's like yep. Stone. You just need to. You just need to physically place the bricks. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. We're just. Uh, we're still working on some permit stuff. I guess that's mm -hmm. the longest thing. I'm. I'm learning about all this as we go along. Um, I'm working with a good friend of mine, Andrea Lebowski from Andrea's um, Interior Designs. She came up with the whole design of the new space. It's absolutely fabulous, um, and she's been fantastic to work with. So it's just. Um, you know, you just gotta all the pieces have to fall into place. So mm -hmm. um, they'll fall into place when they're ready to. So right now we're, we're waiting to get a demo guy in there and give us a little estimate on that and take it from there. Nice. And you said you yourself have tried out all these services that you're going to be offering. You Yeah. Last summer, me and uh, me and uh, my girlfriends, um, Andrea and Missy Hitch, you've met Missy before yep. from Monticello Massage. Um, mm -hmm. We went, we did some traveling last summer, trying out, re doing research and development Mm -hmm. um, on all of these services. So, um, and it was amazing how helpful everybody was, um, just kind of guiding me on what worked for them and what didn't work for them. Um, so it was just, um, you know, going in, in there and having honest conversations, Hey, I'm here to see what you do and, and what would be good for my facility. Um, so everybody was really helpful with that. Nice. That's one thing I like to hear that you, you know, you're friends with another massage therapist. There's no rivalry in town. There's no like, you know, their business versus my business. It's just you support one another. You're there for each other, giving ideas, you know. Yep. Yeah. Me and Missy have uh, she was actually my teacher in school. Oh, nice. Yeah. I didn't she, know was, that. she was my teacher in school. And then we reconnected right around 2010. I graduated in 2003. Um, in 2010, me and her reconnected. I got a group on of hers and ended up on her table. Um, and it was funny because she was going away to a concert that weekend and she was like, what kind of music do you like? And I was like, oh, Stone Temple Pilots, Alice in Chains. And she's like, funny, because I have tickets to go see them this weekend. You want to go with me? And I was like, yes. <laughs> um, so we've been friends ever, ever since. And we help each other grow our businesses. And um, it's I mean, it's not all flowers and sunshine. Sometimes we're like, oh, man, you thought of that first. <laughs> You know, um, so we kind of have a we have a low grade rivalry going on, but it's all in kind of good fun. And we always um, cheer each other on and, and um, wish the best for each other. So it works out great. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. I like it when businesses do that rather than they have their business. I have my business. Let's not talk any further or something like that, you know? Yeah. You know, working together really just helps raise the bar of massage therapy here in Erie. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's it's just so much better if, if you work together as opposed to working against. Yeah, exactly. Now, you, you know me, I have a form of dwarfism. Have you ever, do you work with clients who have different abilities, different, you know, maybe have something that you need to know when you're doing a massage, like something with their back structure, something with how, oh. you know, like different different abilities, I like to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've worked with a wide range. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. So I've had a lot of different people um, on my table. Sometimes I'm told ahead of time. And I'm able to research and, and figure some things out. And other times they show up and I go, okay, this is what we're doing today, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so and you just figure it out as you go along. So um, a massage itself, and body work itself, you know, we're all essentially the same. Um, it just might be in different structures, right? So um, it, 
but in the end, we're all we're all the same. So in a lot of times, it's not always about the body work. Um, it's sometimes it's just about the connection with the people um, and helping them along their healing journey as well. So, yeah. I love that. So where can our buddies learn more about your business, by the way? Uh, they can check out our website at compassionateheart.com. Um, heart being H-A-R-T, because that is my last name. Um, and then I also have Facebook and Instagram, uh, Facebook at Compassionate Heart and Instagram at heart underscore massage. And you said that was compassionateheart.com? Yes. Awesome. Didn't want to send our buddies anywhere to, you know, like any fun websites or anything like that, you know? Right. Yep. Yep. (laughs) So on top of being a massage therapist, you're also, you also like to foster dogs. I do. I love fostering dogs. This was um, another thing that happened several years ago. And I had been thinking about wanting to foster dogs. Um, And it was late at night one night. And it was one of those, sometimes when you want to do something, but you're afraid of all the what ifs, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just about ripping that bandaid off. And I just tossed an email out to, at that time I started with because you care. Um, and I was like, I don't know what this is going to look like. I don't know what, how this is. I don't even know if I'll end up doing this. Um, and they got back to me and I started fostering for because you care. Um, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. It's a little stressful the first day or two, but now that I've been doing it for five or six years, like it's, so much fun. I love learning about all the dogs and um, it, it, yeah, it's, I just absolutely enjoy it. Yeah. Awesome. How many foster dogs do you think you've had throughout this time? I've probably, so when I was with Because You because you Care um, and it was 20, my last dog was uh, with them was my Miss Rosie. Um, so at that point she was around my 40th dog with them. And so I probably had a good, maybe 20 more with happy bark. Um, so I probably have had a good 60 ish dogs come through my house in the last five years. Wow. How how are you able to like give them to a new family or something? Like, how do you not become like emotionally attached to them? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, I do. So when, What's really nice about working with Happy Bark um, as a foster home is that I do get some input on the homes that they go to, um, and I've never had to struggle with the homes that they were going to. I also that's- can't afford another dog. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so I do, um, despite the fact that I would love to take them all in, I know that fostering is an essential part of animal rescue. And if this was not done, there would be more dogs euthanized every year. So I, I take this role very seriously. Um, and despite, despite my feelings of falling in love with each and every one of these dogs and them adding a little something special to my life, I can't be selfish like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, because if I, if I got another dog, I wouldn't be able to foster you know what I mean? That would be too much. You know what I mean? My Miss Rosie, she has been a godsend. She gets along. She's so great with all. The, I mean, she's the one you got to give credit for, you mm-hmm. know, because um, she's the one that accepts these strange dogs into our home and um, kind of shares her bones with them and <laughs> shares me with them. So she's actually the one that gets the credit here. So nice. Do you have any dogs coming up? Do you have any uh not at the moment. I because I'm we're getting a new software system in the office, and I'm gonna have to be there a lot more at mm-hmm. the moment. So um, I just told my um, um, our guy at Happy Bark uh, to give me another week or two before I bring another dog in. I just had one that got adopted last Thursday into a home. His name was Doonesbury, a big goofy uh, black and white dog. He was fabulous. Um, you was trying to sleep on my head, like a puppy pile at night. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So I've got two more questions for you to make this an official buddy cast. Sure. The first one is brought to us by my buddy, Jonas Kane at hashtag positivity. He wants to know in your own words, what does it mean to be someone's buddy? You know, allowing people to just be who they are around you. Um, and accepting us all for 
how wonderful we all are and how messed up we can all be and how hard life really is and being gracious to all of us um, and loving and caring and um, just being the best person that we can. So that brings out the best in everybody else. Love that answer. And the final question that I have for you tonight is what we call the ultimate buddy cast buddy question. You ready for this one? Okay. <laughs> for anyone out there who wants to become a massage therapist, what is your advice to them? Do it. Just do it. It's not about something that you're going to maybe do forever, right? Like, this is my choice. This is what I'm going to do forever. Anything, whether it be massage or anything in your life, if it's stirring in there, go for it. Do it. Even Love. if you, even if you're crappy at it, right? Well, you're going to be crappy at it first. Everybody's crappy at everything at first, right? But you're exactly. going to learn things, right? And that's, that's what life's all about. Yep. One of my favorite, one of my all time favorite life sayings is every champion was once a contender who refused to give up. Yes. Yes. I tell people, I tell people all the time, you know, Babe Ruth didn't just pick up a bat, start swinging and crack a home run on his first try, you know? Yep. Yep. And that's exactly okay. what it is. Whether, and I guess that's what I was saying, whether you're going to do it forever or whatever it is, you're going to learn something from it and move on and go from there. So anything that you have brewing in your head that you want to do, massage therapy, a business owner, fostering dogs, comedy, right? Mm -hmm. Get out there and try it. You know, like I said, I, I tried stand up comedy and I just, for me, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it yet. Who knows? Right. Who knows? Um, You're absolutely knows? right. Hey, stand up comedy. You learn as you go along. My first stand up comedy show was a night of juniors. It was open mic night. I remember this night like it was yesterday. It was a packed crowd. And then halfway through the show, one comedian gets up there and half the crowd leaves because they were all with him. Mm -hmm. Leaving the other half of us here like, well, what just happened? Here and then they refused. They didn't tell me until the end that, okay, it came down to the last three people. Meanwhile, my family's all sitting there going, any day now, any minute now. <laughs> they go, okay, you're, he or you're up next, then you, and then you. I, I guess headliner tonight, meaning you're DFL. Wow. <laughs> and then everyone's ready to go home. Every, you know, we've sat through how many comedians now? Some rocked it. Some, you know, keep at it. You'll get there, you know. Yep. Things like that. But then you're right. If you keep trying, I took that experience and, and I said, you know what? I'm going to keep at it because I can do this. The next time I tried it, I got my first full room laugh. Mm -hmm. I found my I found my key joke and it, like it was the biggest laugh of the night. I was stunned by it. You know, like it, sounded like it sounded it was like probably were, addicting, though, wasn't it? Like 100 percent. Yeah. It sounded like you were at, at an actual comedy club. That's how big of a laugh it was. That's awesome. And I'm like, this is it. So you're right. Don't give up on your talent. No matter what you're doing, don't give up. And just like Buddy Cash, you know. You know, like, but I guess, and you, you have to admit, you're still learning as you go along, aren't you? You're still oh. learning to this day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Always. I, I barely know what I'm doing every day. <laughs> you learn as you go along, you know? Yep. yep. Learn something new every day. If you don't, if you don't, if you're not learning something every day, then I'm not sure if you're breathing. Right. Yep. So, but buddy, thank you so much for stopping on buddy cast talking about your business. I'm excited. I need, I need to try it out. Cause I always love a good massage, you know? Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, come on in, come on in you and your wife. I don't think I've met your lovely wife yet. So you'll get a chance. All you'll right. Get an opportunity. But before we close out this episode, I have one favor to ask you. Okay. Whatever you do today, tomorrow, next week, next month, or even next year, please promise me you're going to go out and go be someone's buddy. Will do, for sure. Awesome. For all my buddies out there, this is my buddy, Heather Hart. Please check out A Compassionate Heart Massage Therapy. Go get a massage. You'll, you won't regret it. I'm your host, Nick Sorensen. Thank you for joining us on another episode of everybody's favorite show, Buddy Cast. Like we say, go be someone's buddy. We'll see you all next time. See ya. Well, the days are going fast, buddy, buddy, we've got to make them last, buddy, buddy, before.